This is kind of an odd question, but I think it's something that comes up a lot here at this conference. And it's what I would call the net roots, will you still love me tomorrow <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> um, you know, we go out on dates with candidates. They say all the right things. They buy us dinner and tell us we're pretty. Um, and then it's all they can do to get as far away from us as possible. You know, we're kind of like the girl that they had under the bleachers, but won't take to the prom. And, and I, I, took, I took a look at your campaign contributions from your first race. And by far and away, the net roots were your biggest supporter. And yet, and this, this isn't a, 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 you know, a, a gripe per se to you because, you know, I agree that leadership involves going outside the financial support. Um, but there's no way in hell that we could refer to you as our candidate the way Boeing could refer to Kurt Weldon as their guy. You know what I mean? Um, so I think, so I'm going to ask you for some feedback for us. How do we as a group get to the level where we get, we get that kind of credibility, where we get the courtesy call when somebody says, you know what, I know I supported this, but there's been some changes and I just wanted to give you a heads up before I voted. How do we get that kind of respect? Just call. I literally, I, and I say that, my office, you call us 9 o'clock tonight, someone will answer the phone. And we try to get back to everyone. I think you're special. I think every American but I don't, is special. I don't so we've mean heard just that you. before. I just don't mean you, though, Joe. I meant everyone in general. The candidates that, that woo us and we support early on when that early money is really important. And then it's kind of like, OK, well, I'm, I'm an incumbent now. I don't need you guys anymore. How do we, how do we break through that barrier? And let me, add to, let me try to add to it. What I'm hearing from you is constituent services, which is very important. And calling. legislative, down in Washington. But I think Susie is also talking about just the power dynamics. This is a relatively new political community right. that's trying to figure out its place. And so I guess she's trying to get you to look at it from the other view and say, what makes a difference to you as an as a elected official? Well, it does. To me, it makes a difference when you do call. Um, and first of all, if you have an incident where we haven't been responsive, I need to know. But you're trying to talk more bigger picture here, correct? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're, if you're going to vote on something that, in your mind, has become more nuanced and that uh, you're going to support yeah. it. This is a very good point, then. Um, I, why yes. is there no proactive outreach? Absolutely. And this isn't just you. This is, these no, are progressive no. candidates in general. She has a point in the sense that I have approximately 23 advisory groups. I have a union advisory group. I meet with them every three to four months. I have a small business advisory group a higher education group, a nurses uh, advisory group, an autistic advisory group, that in my district people sit down, and sometimes I do in Washington, I do not have one well, see, that is a religious basis because I just yeah. don't want people to call, I wanted more of a formal one, and that might be one to add into a new. Well, part of the problem is, is we developed a strategy, the networks developed a strategy whereby we looked at Nash races around the country, you know, that weren't in our own districts, and we said, you know what, we can make a strategic difference here and get right. a progressive candidate. And so we pulled, we pulled our resources and we get that person, that early backing that they're looking for. But because we're so diffused, we're not really seen as a legitimate constituency. I, th I think you're right, because when I think about my last two and a half years, now I've called each time to ask to come to this convention. Mm -hmm. And I went up and talked to a Walter Schurenstein Harvard Public Policy Forum, and I spoke, and Dan Rather and others were in the audience, and my whole speech was about, I hope you don't mind me using the term, the blogosphere, and how this is such a wonderful thing, because people, two parents working, etc., they want to be able to communicate when and when they want to, you know, and this is it. But I have not reached out to you consciously, as I do to labor, for example. And I say, you know, here's this issue coming up, let's discuss it. And so do you... I can commit, I, I, I will commit to talking to anyone. Do you think it's geographic, though, that you know exactly who to call in labor in Pennsylvania, whereas who would you call, who would you call if you were trying to reach out to this community? Right now, I, 
Yeah, I, well, I think Chris, you would call Chris Bowers. Yeah, I would call Chris, Chris Bowers because email. you know and all that. <laughs> and I have I have two youth on my staff that do nothing but this, um, because I for the last year and a half my the guy I went in the Navy with who runs my district office, Navy Captain retired, says Joe, say like we have 55 interns in my district office and 50 in Washington, and we know that we're not quite communicating well in the new era. And so we finally hired two youth to do nothing but help me kind of be out there all the time. I never go anywhere now without a gentleman in the back seat or gentlewoman in the back seat on a wireless twittering or doing whatever. I'm a little slow at this. And, but I think you're right. I haven't thought this through. Maybe. I'm very taken if I could have a point of contact to say, what do you think? It doesn't mean that I accept everything when I talk to Absolutely. labor or business, but there needs to be a more determinate discussion. So let's